In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, our God and our Father in heaven. We bless you for all the heavenly blessings we receive from you. We worship you for all that we receive through Christ. We exalt your holy name for keeping us alive. We aren't better than anybody who is gone beyond. But we know that just by your grace, we are still here. Father, we pray the grace that has kept us till this moment will continue to keep us in Jesus' name. And we pray the faith we started with, we will not leave it behind us in Jesus' name. The faith that saved us, the faith that sanctified us, the faith that gave us the power in the Holy Ghost baptism, Lord, we will continue in this faith in Jesus' name. And even the faith to receive anything from you, healing, prosperity, provisions of this life, material things, protection from our enemies, we ask the faith to be victorious over all these. We will continue in them in Jesus' name. For everybody here, Lord, I pray, our faith will be increased to sustain us until we meet you on that day in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I pray your word will come and will give us insight to have more faith and live in this faith. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank God once again this morning. I'm going to speak to you on the topic, the threefold life and faith of a Christian. The threefold life and faith of a Christian. Faith, we all know, starts with us. It is the commencement of our Christian journey. There is nothing we do in Christianity without faith. The life of a Christian is a faith life. It's a life of faith. Our lives as Christians begins and ends in faith. You started in faith, have to continue in faith, and it will have to end in faith. The salvation experience, the sanctification experience, the spirit-filled or spirit baptism experience, all are by faith. And that is why Paul tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. This time I want to wait for you to open it so we can read together. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Can I read now? Can I read now? Okay. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh by... Sorry, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's the word of God. It's impossible. It's something that cannot be done without. It's indispensable. You have to have faith. So it's impossible to do anything. God can receive you without faith. Outside of faith, you don't have anything to do in the kingdom. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And therefore, whoever comes to Christ, whoever comes into this kingdom, into this uh, gathering, into the church, uh, must have faith within himself, uh, within his heart. Faith for salvation. Faith to live like Christ and faith to walk and to work with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Ghost. We have been promised good stuff, but not without suffering persecution. You have to go through persecution with all the good things the Lord has promised us. And you know what? Here is where the threefold faith is tested. As you go through the persecution, at the level of your salvation, at the level of your sanctification, 
And at the level where you say you are baptizing the Holy Ghost, you face trials, temptations, tests. You face so many things, afflictions in this life. And through these, that threefold faith are tested. They are tested to make sure whether they are real or they are fake. Whether you will complain or you will grudge. Whether you will grumble or stay calm. Whether you will slide back or desert Christ or continue. Threefold faith is tested. I want to talk to you on three points. Number one, the faith life of a saved Christian. The faith life of a saved Christian. Number two. The fortified life of a sanctified Christian. The fortified life of a sanctified Christian. Number three, the fullness of life in a spirit-filled charismatic. Let's go back to number one. Number one, the faith life of a saved Christian. The faith life of a saved Christian. When one joins the Christian race... He lives and behaves like Christ. That is what it's supposed to be. Because you've joined this race of people following Christ to eternity, you live like Christ. You behave like Christ. How did Christ live and how did he behave? Meek, gentle, peaceful. He wasn't aggressive. He was not a brawler. He wasn't a quarrelsome somebody, personality. Christ wasn't like that. Look at how he responded to his accusers and to his persecutors during his trial, during his persecution. He did not say anything like, do you know me? I am Christ. I am the son of God. I am the Jesus. I am the one that God has sent me. Christ did not respond to his accusers, his persecutors that way. He did not respond, is it me you talk to like that? Do you know where I come from? Do you know my background? Do you know where I have been to? You got to be careful dealing with me. Christ did not talk like that. I can change your destiny. I am Jesus. In fact, I can change your sleeping place. I can change your bed. That the bed you sleep on every night, you are not going to sleep on that bed this night. Not Jesus. Not Jesus. I can make you forget your date of birth. Not Jesus. I can make you forget the day you were born. Not Jesus. Christ didn't open his mouth. On his way to his crucifixion, he did not. And the Bible tells us that like a sheep, he was quiet, he was mute. That's the way of Christian. That is the way of pilgrim people, uh, those who are on pilgrimage to the heavenly uh, shores. This is the life they live in. Christ wasn't like a goat. You know goats? Goats are very stubborn. And uh, if Jesus had been like a goat, they would have suffered uh, taking him to hang him on the cross. You know how you get a, you wanted to kill a goat and unless that very day you want to kill that goat, he must be, it must be a king. If you don't put it on your shoulders, <laughs> you will not eat that meat that day. But we are not like that. We are sheep. That's the life Christ walked in. Then this is the very faith that Christ has brought you into. The very faith the Holy Spirit has called you into. And so, as a sheep, he was gentle, he was meek, and uh, he was quiet. But unfortunately, for some of us, not everybody, and I'm not talking about you here only. I'm talking about the generality of we Christians of today. Unfortunately, when 
things happen and it does it did not go our way or it doesn't go our way we begin to react negatively opposite of Christ we break houses we break plates we turn tables upside down and uh, Cops are thrown away, remote controls are thrown somewhere, and uh, if we are working with some people on the other cubicle, we are here and uh, they cannot concentrate on their work, they cannot concentrate on their job, and children are running under the table when we are coming in, all because something has happened and it did not go our way. Brothers, sisters, can we learn from Christ that this faith, the beginning of our faith, which is salvation, is to keep us in a position where we are like Christ himself, like Jesus himself. Make a mistake on the road, and this so-called Christian will take it as an offense and will chase and drive roughly forgetting that he has a sticker that tells the people that i'm a child of god probably the sticker behind his car is saying be patient with me and now he doesn't want to be patient with anybody because somebody has mistakenly driven a way that he or she doesn't like and come see him making dangerous moves and maneuvers and curves. Brother, sister, this is not how Christ lived. And this is all because you are offended for one reason or the other. I'm telling you, this person has not experienced the first faith in Christianity, which is salvation. Because the life of a Christian is that of Christ. And that is why you are called a Christian. You may come to church, or he or she may come to church, or may go to church anywhere. But if he or she is not living like Christ, then the grace, the faith has not begun yet. And I pray that we all go back and if we see anything of that sort in our lives that does not resemble Christ, we will go to Calvary and there we'll pray for a change in Jesus' name. Look at him at the neighborhood. Everyone knows him as a troublemaker. Although he picks his Bible, she picks his Bible, and she sings hymns across the other apartment. They hear, they, they hear him singing uh, hymns, choruses, but, but she is still a troublemaker. He has issues with almost every neighbor. And, uh, you know, I know a neighbor. That neighbor, and this is a neighbor, true story, neighbor. She has problems with almost everybody she has a boundary with. Before him, she has a, a problem with. Be, uh, uh, this side, she has. This side, behind her, she has. In fact, you know, when, peop, uh, when these children um, uh, start going to school, or the kids will come and wait for the bus. Now, the mothers and the, the parents that have brought their cars will park at, her, at uh, uh, her front by her grass. She doesn't like that one. One of those days, I, we saw even police coming over. But the unfortunate thing is, do you want to hear that? She has a banner that is written the blood of Jesus, faith of whatever. And that is telling people that I am in this faith. I am a child of God. I am a Christian. But you have problems with almost everybody. If Jesus had been having troubles, problems with all his neighbors, nobody would have followed Christ. You will not be like that in Jesus' name. You will be a good neighbor. You will be a good Christian. And so what I'm saying is uh, the faith life, the beginning of our faith starts with our genuine repentance where Christ or the life of Christ is what we emulate and live. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. 1 Peter 
I read chapter 4, verse number 14. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. I believe you are there. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. I read, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, if ye be persecuted, if ye go into trouble, into affliction, if ye be challenged for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resisted, rested rather upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Before I move on to verse 15, I just want to tell you that uh, if for any reason, especially for your faith in Christ uh, and for your righteous living, you are being persecuted, uh, I want to tell you that uh, Christ will glorify you for that in Jesus' name. I said Christ will glorify you in Jesus' name. But you have also to remember that uh, Christ... Uh, is, is not going to glorify you when you are suffering for anything that is contrary to righteousness. Look at verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, suffer as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters, going around and uh, telling, telling stories and selling other people's stories. Do not do that, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. If you are being bullied, if you are being persecuted, if you are being pushed in some dungeons and suffering anywhere, if some good things, your rights have been taken away from you, withdrawn from you just because you're a child of God, the scripture says, for, for Christ's sake, for righteousness' sake, do not be ashamed. But when you are persecuted, Persecuted as a drunkard, you have to be ashamed of that. If you are being persecuted as a fornicator, then you got to be ashamed of that. If you are being persecuted as a brawler, as a fighter, as a quarrelsome man or woman, you got to be ashamed of that. If you are persecuted because you are a thief, you know, steal, then you got to be ashamed of that. If you are persecuted because you cause abortion or you help other people to cause abortion, then you got to be ashamed of that. 16, yet if any man, verse 16, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Glorify God. Thank God, verse 17, for the time is come. The judgment must begin at the house of God. And if first it first begin at us Christians, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? I read verse 17, sorry, verse 18, verse 18. Look at verse 18 now. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? There is a warning to somebody who has not accepted Christ. He has been coming all these years and he, he just... Uh, get himself involved uh, and among the sheep uh, and and and, and uh, within him he or she knows uh, she is or he is a goat uh, well it will not be well with you please uh, let the lord touch you and uh, uh, changes you brethren lovers of christ what am i saying christ loves you and loves me also brethren lovers of christ lovers of god Lovers of believers, when you are persecuted, remember that God loves you. When you are bullied, remember that God loves you. When you are criticized, don't say evil against other people because all the, uh, they are saying evil things against you. They lie against you. They imprison you. No. No. That these are the trials of of your faith. All these are coming upon you because they have to come and trial your faith. Your faith is being tested at this moment when all these persecutions and all these uh, uh, 
trials and afflictions and people saying all sorts of things against you, about you, is because your faith has to be tried and it has to be tested. We are not to run away from Christ when we are persecuted, when we are bothered, when we are pushed down, when we are uh, pushed at the corner. We are not to run away from Christ. And we don't throw away our Bibles because the promise is there. You will get all these things plus persecution. You don't throw your Bible away and run away. We don't make brethren our enemies. It's that brother, that's why I'm suffering. It's that sister, that's why I'm suffering. We don't make our husbands, our wives, our parents, our children, our enemies. In fact, we don't make our ministers, pastors, leaders in the church. We don't make them our enemies because we are suffering. And we don't close our doors to fellowship. The doors of our arms, the doors of our hearts, and the doors of our life, we do not close them against fellowship. Whereby a brother calls you, and because of what happened some time ago, you, have, you still have this resentment within you, and the anger is there, and you are upset. You don't want to open up. Don't let us do that. The name and the title Christian is the best I have met. The best I have met. I don't know any other name that is better than the name Christian. Little Christ is the best I have met. But unfortunately, it is also the name that is hated most. The most hated name the most hated people, the most hated group on earth now is Christian. And that is because the life of a child of God, the life of Christians repudiates. The life of a child of God refuses. The life of a child of God rejects all the ungodliness of the world. And that is the reason why the child of God, the Christian, is persecuted. Our lives, like a high beam of, of, the, of the light of a car, kind of gets into the eyes of the unbeliever, into the eyes of the people of the world, and they don't want to embrace you. They don't want to. Our life is set up high on a mountain, and uh, the jealous age, and that's why they kind of uh, persecute you. We are like a ripe fruit on the top of that tree. It could be a ripe mango, ripe orange. And actually, this reminds me of my school age when we were kids and we we're going to school. Oh, children of this place don't enjoy at all. In fact, somebody was saying it yesterday that we need to send our children to Africa to maybe for two years or so. By the time they will come back, more experience. Is that true? Yeah, we need to. Just take them two years, three years, and then you bring them back. By the time they come back, they've learned so much, so many things. Okay, so let me go back to what I was trying to tell you. In those days, we were, we, we were we'll go to the farm. Maybe after break or maybe after school, we will see somebody's uh, orange tree or somebody's mango tree, and it's ripe. What do we do? We target it, and we throw stones, and we, we throw uh, sticks, sticks, and uh, we, we, we do everything possible to do what? To get the fruit out of it. But not every fruit will we aim at. We only aim at the ripe fruit. The green ones, we don't like them. The ripe ones. And that is who you are like a ripe orange mango fruit on a tree. The archers will aim at you because they need you so much. There is something good in you. There is fruit in you. There is sweetness in you. And uh, they want you at all costs. Even the insect. The insect don't, don't patch on the green ones. They go to the ripe ones. That's what they want. Why? The goody things are there. And that is what the enemy does. Our persecutor does. They want to kind of 
pump out, push out all the good things out of us. The, the love we have in, our, in ourselves, the goodness and the likeness that we have in our, the patience that we have in, our, in ourselves, the self-control that we have in, our, in ourselves, they want to take them out of us. But they can only do it through persecution. And that's why Christ tells us that you will get everything plus persecution. And that is because there are good things in you. May the Lord help you to overcome all your persecutors in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. At times they hate you. Not because of anything. They, they, they see you as a secret agent. Because you, 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 will, you will rebuke them of the wrong things they do. And uh, if it's at the place of work when you are coming, the kind of uh, the, the secret agent is coming. We got to be careful. He is coming to gather information so he will report us, something like that. Uh, if you are among your family members, they see you in the same way because uh, you, will, you will be like somebody that is coming to gather information to incriminate them somehow. And that is why they hate you. I pray that their hatred will not drive you out from Christ in Jesus' name. Thieves don't like you as a child of God. Robbers don't like you, and they won't like you as a child of God. Fornicators will not like you as a child of God. Drunkards will not like you. Glum, uh, 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 gamblers and the smugglers will not like you as a child of God. Drug pushers won't like you. Prostitutes will not like you. Those who do abortion, abortionists will not like you as a child of God. Wherever you tend to as a Christian, these days, you are not welcome. Somehow, everyone seems angry against you. But understand, your faith must see you through. Your faith as a child of God. Your faith as a Christian. Your faith as somebody who is following after Jesus must see you through. And it will see you through in Jesus' name. I said it will see you through in Jesus' name. The Bible says, happy are ye. When you are persecuted, be happy. Meaning, rejoice. Don't carry a long face. Don't wear a sorrowful face. Don't look like a mourner. Mourning for some, for, for some, for some relative that has, that has died for days. Don't be like that. Be like Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas entered into the Christian race. And when they started... Where did they land? They land through persecution. They landed in prison. When they got there, they did not discourage themselves. Like Paul. That is uh, uh, Silas, right? Calling to Paul. They didn't do that. They were not disappointed. And they were not displeased with Christ. They sang praise songs. And that is what must come out of your lips whenever you go through anything that is persecution, that is affliction. So Barnabas did not say, hey, Paul, I didn't know this is how it's going to be. I don't know. So is that how we're going to go through this thing they call Christianity? I quit then. I go back to the world then. Barnabas wasn't like Demas. The Bible says, for Demas has loved this present world. And as such, he went back. Barnabas did not discourage Paul. Neither did Paul also discourage Barnabas by saying, true, true. I better go back to do my Phariseeism. Because as a Pharisee, I was riding on top and I had power, I had authority to do whatever I needed to do. As long as they sent me to go and arrest people, I'm on my way. Even if they want to kill somebody, I'm over there to help them do that. I may not throw the stone, but at least I can help fold the flowing garment of those who want to throw the stone so that they can kill the person. Paul did not say, I'm going to go back into all those tents. And they did not say, look at us. Oh. 
this Jesus thing, I'm going to make a better decision. I'm going to make a good decision. They continued. You will continue. I said you will continue. So my question to you is, are you suffering for righteousness sake? Remember, you will. You will be glorified. Even if you are suffering today. The bridegroom is coming for the bride. And you know, in my life, I have not seen any bride that will be crying and weeping. It's not an easy road. And I didn't know that I will suffer like this as a, as, as, as a bride. As a, bri uh, a, a bride. I didn't know that this is how it is. And uh, maybe three days to the day of wedding, a week to the day of wedding, will be crying and weeping. I've never seen a first class student that uh, days to graduation and he will be sorrowful and sad and morose when he knows when she knows that she he has first class in his examination you will not see them sorrowful don't you know that there is a day when our bridegroom is coming to take us bride don't you know a day is coming that there will be a graduation ceremony for us where we will be called and our reward will be given to us why then must you be sorrowful today? Why then must you go as if uh, you, you, you are an, an orphan because of persecution? And you know those students uh, that uh, are going for the graduation, and it doesn't matter what, whatever grade they had, as long as they have passed their class uh, and they are going for that, their graduation, you don't see them. You don't see them sorrowful and uh, complaining and uh, grudging that, uh, that my teacher was too hard, was too difficult. My professor was so mean. Uh, he never smiled. I used to go to classes, empty stomach. Uh, they did or they don't complain. I hope you are understanding me. Are you understanding me? Student about to go to their graduation ceremony don't remember all these to bring sorrow, sadness, discouragement into their life and into their hearts. They are happy. They are joyful. They are excited. They are cheerful. That's what Christ wants you to be. That even in persecution, you wear that cheerful face. Remember, my brother, all the negative incidents that has happened to you in your Christian race, they are actually preparing you as a student. All the tests that the professor gave to the student, the teachers gave to the student, they gave them to prepare them for the final exams so that they will do well in the final exam. And the same thing, you face tests, you face trials, you face temptations, you face temptresses, you face whatever you face, they are all there to prepare you for your heaven. May you pass every one of them in Jesus' name. So your persecutors and your persecution is going to help you to make heaven. If you don't know, today I'm telling you that if you're going through any hardship, any heartache, any affliction, anything that you don't like, that is not pleasing to you, you are going through them because they are tests to help you and therefore be happy. Be cheerful when they come your way. And that's what Jesus Christ tells us. Another thing to remember is your name is in heaven. See, people that go through persecution or are persecuted as a result of their faith in Christ and as a result of righteousness, those people's name are written in God's book, the book of life. See, when the disciples went for preaching, they came back and they reported to Christ, Jesus, Satan, was fallen. And uh, Jesus said, yes, I know that. I know that. But let me tell you the truth. Don't be happy. Don't be cheerful. Because Satan is fallen. Be happy. 
Because what? Your name is written. Rejoice. Rather rejoice because your name is written. Where is your name? Your name in somebody's payroll, a company's payroll, is that all you is is that all you have? Where your name is written? Your name in a certain bank, your name in a certain school, your name in the church, just in the church is good, your name is here, but if it's not written in heaven, it's not the best. It's not the best. But you got to be happy and rejoice. And so Jesus said, I tell you, rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Don't just be happy you're a citizen of this nation. That is nothing. Be happy you're a citizen of heaven. And ushers may write your name. The ministers may have your name. But if your name is not in heaven, that is not a good thing. But you know, it's your first faith that faith of salvation that is going to get your name into that book. Maybe your name is no more there because of some carelessness in life. Your name has been taken out. Maybe there was hatred in your heart against somebody and that has taken your name. Maybe there was wickedness you did against somebody and, and that has taken your name out. Maybe you quarreled with somebody. Maybe you went into drinking or smoking and, uh, and uh, maybe you visited Delilah. Maybe you told a lie against somebody and that took your name from the book. Today your name can come back in Jesus' name. The Lord will insert your name again into the records in Jesus' name. So when we are persecuted for Christ's sake, but not for drinking's sake, not for robbery's sake, not for smuggling's sake, not for doing drugs' sake, not for being prostitute's sake, then we are in good hands. And the Lord will help you and will help, will help me. The Lord will support you. Be cheerful in anything that you're going through. And as a church, I encourage every one of us, let's be cheerful in everything we go through in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 tells us, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11 says, Blessed are ye when... Men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake, for my name's sake, verse 12, rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. Turn to your neighbor and say rejoice. rejoice. Tell your neighbor, say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. So you are not the only one who is being persecuted, who is going through affliction, who is going through trouble. That means Joseph didn't punch his brothers before they sold him to strangers. And Joseph did not steal from Potiphar before they threw, they threw him into that prison. No, he wasn't in prison because of that. He was going through persecution. Daniel didn't curse uh, the king and the princess had, uh, uh, in that uh, country or in that province. He didn't do that before they threw him into the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego did not burn the palace of Nebuchadnezzar before he threw them into the fire. It's all because they stood for righteousness. They stood for their king in heaven and that was why. And therefore, if you are going through the same thing, remember, they also went through it. Remember Jeremiah was tortured, was prepared when he has done them no evil. He has done them no evil. They prepared him, they tortured him, they tormented him Put him in a dungeon. In fact, he decided not to preach again. But his faith in God did not allow him. Your faith in God will not stop you in Jesus' name. 
will keep you moving on like Jeremiah in Jesus' name. There was a point he said, I want to close my mouth. I will not preach again. I will not teach again. I will not do anything to call these people back to God again. But you know, the Bible says uh, he still felt something within him burning like fire. That was the word of God and he could not keep quiet. He still spoke the word. And that is what Christ is telling you at this time. That even in that heat of that persecution, continue to do what you have to do for Christ. And you will succeed as he backs you up in Jesus name. So let's be like Jeremiah. Let's be like Daniel. Let's be like Joseph. Let's be like the three Hebrew children. Don't remember the insult. Don't remember the lies they tell about you and against you. Don't pay evil with evil. Don't focus on the pain. Their accusation is causing in your heart, in your life. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, Philippians, sorry, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. We will close very soon. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Finally, are you there? Philippians 4 8. I have some time to wait for you. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. Are you there? Okay. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Let's go back to verse 8 again. You see, it says truth, truth, truth. Take note of that. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Let me read verse 9 now. Verse 9. Verse 9 says, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Everybody say, Amen. 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 Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are true. See, when people gossip about you, is that the truth? When people tell lies about you, is that the truth? When Joseph's brothers went to his father and said, Ah, some animal has killed him. Look at his dress. This is the blood. Was that the truth? When Potiphar told his her husband that that slave boy you brought in wanted to force himself on me. Was that the truth? You know, they said all these things and all this puts these people in problems, in troubles. But God came to fight for them. My God will come and fight for you. No matter what people say, do against you, at the place of work, at your neighborhood, in your family, your relatives, your office, whatever they say about you, it's not the truth and as such, my God will come and fight for you. Don't fight your battles all by yourself. Give them to God. Let him fight for you and determine, determine in your heart, I am going to continue no matter what to the end. Don't allow Satan to dwarf your faith, your salvation faith. Don't allow him to dwarf your faith. And don't allow persecutors to dwindle your faith. And neither will you allow your faith to be damned by enemies of any sort. The Lord will help you. I said the Lord will help you. And this journey of Christianity, you will continue to the end in Jesus' name. That is point number one. Point number two, the fortified life of a sanctified Christian. I will not start it because I can't finish it. So this morning's message will be part one of that message. We are going to go to God at this time. And we are going to pray to God that God... We have started this race. We have started this journey. We want to finish well. And therefore, the persecutions, the trials, and all the other things that come our way, 
We want you help us to deal with them. Grant us the grace to overcome them. Grant us the grace to face all these challenges. The grace you gave to those in the Old Testament. You gave it to Joseph. You gave it to Shadrach, to Meshach, to Abednego. You gave it to Daniel. You gave it to Nehemiah. You gave it to Jeremiah. In the New Testament, you gave it to the apostles. You gave it to Paul, to Silas. You gave it to Barnabas, to Timothy. You gave it to uh, those people that in the early church, even after the, the disciples. Because if you read the Fox's book of Matthew, you will understand that those people went through real persecution that we have not seen. One, not, not one ten, one thousands of it, we have not seen it. But God gave them that grace. Brothers, sisters, my prayer is is that God will give you that grace. That whatever you are suffering this morning, it's, it's, emotion, it's, it's an emotional trouble that you have. It's a psychological problem you have. It's a physical problem you're going through. It's a financial trouble you're going through. It's a marital you're going through. In any way you are suffering, people are against you, coming out against you, and are physically making you to know they hate you, they don't like you, they dislike you. People doing all this all because you're a righteous person, you are a Christian at, a, at your place of work. Maybe they, they jump you when it comes to promotion. They jump you when it comes to increment. They jump you when something good that, uh, that, is, that is favoring you is coming your way. They push you aside. Don't worry about all these because God is going to fight for you. And uh, as long as it's because of your righteousness, as long as 